Hey my friends, Matt from Rancliffe Media here. Welcome to another DaVinci Resolve Studio tutorial. We're here in DaVinci Resolve color page and I'm going to be showing you guys how I do my noise reduction process to get a really high quality clean image. Now it doesn't matter whether you're shooting at ISO 100 or ISO 1600, all digital cameras produce some sort of noise. And when you're delivering a commercial project to a client or or you might be uploading stock footage, or you might just want a really high quality looking YouTube video, it's really important to understand how to use the noise reduction tools in DaVinci Resolve so that you can get the best quality image possible. Now, I recommend going to the Help tab and going to DaVinci Resolve Reference Manual. Under the Motion Effects section, which is on page 3269, you can read all about the various noise reduction controls and how they work. Now to begin with, the noise reduction lives under motion effect and it's under this little icon here. And with this particular shot, this is shot with Blackmagic RAW and 6K and it was shot at ISO 800. And I deliberately underexposed this shot slightly to retain all the nice color detail in the, in the clouds because it was sunset. There is a lot of noise in the dark shadow areas of the image and it's especially noticeable when I play this. And I'm gonna show you guys how I go about removing all that noise so we get a really nice clean image. Now noise is especially noticeable when you underexpose and when you have dark shadowy areas in the image. Now I tend to shoot most of my shots at either 400 or 800 ISO because um, that gives me the most dynamic range shooting at the camera's native ISO settings. Now to begin with, I'm gonna to go to my motion effects now, temporal noise reduction analyzes the image across multiple frames to isolate the noise from the details in the image. You can choose the number of frames you want DaVinci Resolve to analyze in order to average out the separate noise from the detail. The higher the number of frames, the higher the average. This will require a lot more processing power, but it will give you much better results. So I tend to set the number of frames to either four or five. If you want the best possible results, I would go with five. Now it will slow down your computer. I'm only editing on an M1 MacBook Air and if I set this to five, my computer is really gonna struggle to, to play this back, especially when I start applying more noise reduction throughout uh, these tools. Now moving on to our motion range, uh, set type can either be set to faster, better or none. For the best results, I tend to set this to better as this excludes motion from the noise reduction process more accurately and gives the best results. And for motion range, now this is this depends on how much motion you have in the image. So for instance, if you have a lot of motion in the scene and it's taking up a large amount of the frame, then you would set this to large. Most of the time I use medium, uh, you could use small if there's very little movement in the scene, but for most shots, um, I would go with medium. But you just have to use your initiative with that. Now moving on to spatial noise reduction. Uh, these controls allow you to smooth out the areas in the image where there's high frequency noise. It attempts to avoid softening the image and tries to preserve the detail as much as possible. Now there's three different modes, faster, better and enhanced. I tend to set this to better for most situations and that works uh, really well. Now if you go with enhanced, it's gonna actually allow you to unlink Luma and Chroma. So you don't have that option on better. It'll just put your settings into both Luma and Chroma at once. If you don't already know what Luma and Chroma is, uh, Luma is controls the amount of noise applied to the light and dark areas in the image. So basically the overall exposure. Uh, Chroma threshold, this controls the amount of noise reduction applied to the color in the image. So if you do have a really noisy image with lots of kind of speckled noise in the colors, then you could crank this up a lot higher than Luma. But if you were to crank up the Luma and Chroma together, you'd be losing a lot more detail because Luma you can only take so far. So just gonna go with better. Now motion blur, it's just the same as I explained before. I just tend to set this to better as well for the best results. And motion range, it's exactly the same as I just explained. So I'm just gonna go with medium for this shot. Now moving on to temporal threshold. Now this, this is uh, where you apply the amount of noise reduction. Again, you have the Luma and Chroma. I tend to just set this at either seven or eight to begin with. And that's just a good starting point with my shots. I've found that seven and eight removes all the noise that I need to in, a, in an image that has a good exposure and has very little noise in the image. Now motion 
I tend to leave this at 50, but if you have a large amount of motion, you can also try adjusting this above 50. Blend, what that does is basically allows you to dissolve between the image and the amount of spatial noise reduction being applied. I've never had to actually use this. I've never had that much noise in my image where I've had to actually try and blend it in with, with the original image to preserve detail. Now, a bit of a tip, if you do want to see exactly how much detail you're losing and how much noise reduction is actually being applied, then you can go to your highlight view up here and just go to your A and B. If I go Command F, you'll see that there's all this speckled noise here and that's the noise that's being removed. When I go onto the spatial threshold, and let's say I put these to seven, because I tend to put these uh, both to seven, just go back to the preview, and now you'll see there's a bit more edge detail being lost. Now the image might look slightly softer. The most I tend to go with, even with a really noisy image, is about a maximum about 17 or 18 for both these temporal or spatial. As I mentioned, you can adjust the chroma much higher. And if I go back to my highlight view, it's actually made no difference at all in terms of detail lost. So a lot of people, they have this either as their first node or the last node. I just tend to find it easier if I have it as my first node, because that way, if I do want to add nodes at the end, I don't have any issues adding extra nodes because I, have, I just have this at the beginning already told off. Well, that's all we've got time for, guys. I hope you found this video really helpful. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And I really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, especially if you want to see more content like this in the future. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.